everyone, and uh, we are happy to have uh, our friend Ron Rapi in uh, Italy after our EABCT Congress. And I have some questions for you, too, right? after this long day of work. We will be sure and sure. synthetic. Hello. You told us very much about cognitive therapy of our own day. In your opinion, uh, uh, there are interesting things for you about rep therapy uh, with children that you use sometimes. Uh, I, I think I've always had a personal um, feeling for the idea of logical disputation and using evidence. And so I think we, we tend to use a uh, cognitive restructuring technique or style that's more like the sort of thing that Aaron Beck would use, which is uh, uh, looking for evidence and, and convincing yourself through evidence. Uh, but I think there are many children for whom a more uh, um, thought substitution type of um, uh, um, cognitive work or a more um, um, basic type of cognitive work would be very useful. And particularly for younger children or children who um, perhaps uh, are uh, not as intellectually um, gifted or who, um, uh, who are not as educated. I think for some of those, having a more simple technique that simply replaces one thought with another, that looks at the relationship between thoughts and feelings, but simply uh, comes up with more um, calm thoughts can be a very, very useful strategy. Okay. And if you could say a crucial point of your Cool Kids program, what would you say? Uh, in terms of improvement, so si. the key is always exposure. That's exposure for anxiety, exposure, exposure, exposure. For all kinds of uh, uh, anxiety problems, social phobias, obsessive compulsive, you use exposure for everything. Absolutely. Exposure, even for generalised anxiety disorder, we can find things that generally anxious children will avoid and we organise exposure. And I think exposure is the key technique through which change occurs with anxiety. The one um, slight caveat might be uh, with generalised anxiety, where sometimes some of the worries really do require some more cognitive uh, disputation. But uh, really, even there, if you could organise exposure, that will have the most powerful effect. That works. That works. How do you tailor your treatment with different levels of cognitive development or impairment in children? We, for, for children who, are, who have some intellectual difficulties, mm -hmm. uh, we, and, and particularly we have a, a version of Cool Kids that's developed specifically for children, for example, with um, autistic disorder, particularly high-functioning autism. And the differences are simply that we make it much more concrete. So the program is the same. Again, the key issue is exposure, and that doesn't change. Uh, but the difference is that the cognitive restructuring is perhaps more the thought substitution type of restructuring rather than uh, logical disputation and evidence gathering. Uh, we introduce uh, relaxation as a technique because that's a little bit more concrete and, and easy for these children uh, to practice. Uh, and there's some more social skills component and training in inappropriate skills. But other than that, the, the, the strategies and, and the principles are the same. Yeah. And um, they, they cut it, eh? You wanna make it, eh? Hello, you use attention techniques and uh, behavioral techniques and disputing. And you use imagery techniques in your uh, Cool Kids program. At the moment, we haven't been, and I must say it's something that, um, that I have been thinking we should introduce uh, the, the more recent research, I guess, uh, is really pointing to the power of, of imagery strategies. And I would think, if anything, I don't think there's much research on this, but I suspect that if anything, it would be even more powerful for children who are very good at imagining sometimes. So I think uh, using some imagery-based techniques would be very useful. But at this stage, no, we haven't. Uh, we use more the logical disputation primarily together with exposure, exposure, exposure. So, Ron, you are developing your uh, Cool Kids program uh, with new things that you learn in congresses and in literature. All the time. So, I have a last question for you about this. Uh, um, in your kid uh, uh, programs, 
there, there is an internet path uh, at the beginning or during the treatment or at the end or at follow up. Uh, wouldn't you think that an internet uh, uh, control path could add something to your cool kids program? Very much so. Um, we, we have, uh, for several years now, we developed a, a CD uh, f specifically for anxious teenagers. It's a multimedia program. Mm -hmm. um, when we developed it, was quite a number of years ago, so it was really before very many people had internet, mm -hmm. and so we put it on CD. Mm -hmm. um, we're just in the process now of transferring that material onto the internet, and uh, hopefully, really, for the time of this interview, uh, I'd be hoping within a, a couple of months we'll have the teenage version called Cool Teens uh, on the internet. And very shortly following that, we plan to put the Cool Kids program on but, the internet. But it is at the end of the therapy, or is it together with the uh, meeting, the concrete meeting with the therapist? Yeah, the way we're planning to use it, in fact, we're just starting a research trial um, of step care. And so the way we're planning to do it is that we would see the internet component as a low intensity treatment. Okay. That would be done with a very minimal therapist input, primarily over the internet, so through emails or telephone contact. Mm -hmm. um, with and people who are not so ill. No, with, with all children. Uh, so all children would go into the... Um, we begin with the, this. would begin with an internet based program, which would be low intensity, and they would go through the entire uh, program three months with that. And then we'll see how many of those improve. I suspect um, 30, 40, even 50% will be improved and they won't need any more treatment. And then those who need more treatment, uh, who are not improved sufficiently, they would then go to the regular cool kids with a therapist one-on-one -on -one, to get the higher intensity. Mm. Okay, and so to conclude, you, you had many stimuli from EABCT where we met one week ago about these new techniques. Well, EABCT interestingly seemed to have a lot of uh, um, input uh, on internet-based therapy, low-intensity therapies, so and I think it's a very exciting direction. So I'm hoping that uh, we, we already at the Centre for Emotional Health, we've recently um, been joined by uh, Nick Titov, who is a very well-known name in the internet uh, treatment work, and uh, we're doing a lot of great work, and, and I'm hoping that to increase my own uh, involvement and my own input in low-intensity low treatments, um, partly because of Nick's influence. Uh, okay. And uh, well, I want to finish saying you thank you very much that you have been in Milan with us. It was very interesting and su successful, and we will meet again in Marrakesh. In Marrakesh, yes, that's true. It's been a, I've had a fabulous few days in Milan. It's an absolutely beautiful city. Thank you for inviting me, and, and I'm very much looking forward to Marrakesh. Thank you.